Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. I have a few house plants that are currently in sphagnum moss and I particularly don't like it as a long-term growing medium. So I wanna take it out of the moss and put it in a nice chunky arrow mix. This is my philodendron El Chaco Red. It was inspired by a wild fern and her plant. I found one online, I ordered it, and actually there's another one here too that I have to take out of moss from the same uh, shop, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is take it out of the pot and then soak it in this container of water. That way it can uh, loosen up the roots around the moss. Okay, look at those nice roots. So yeah, I don't, I don't like sphagnum moss as a, a growing medium. I know it's very popular, a lot of people do it. I'm just gonna let this soak here for a few minutes. This is warm water. I don't use cold tap water or anything like that because otherwise you're gonna shock the roots. I like to let the moss soak up as much moisture as it can. That way it's just a much easier to untangle all these roots and stuff, especially when it's dry. This almost looks like like some cocoa coir or cocoa husk or some or coconut husk or something like that. But there is moss in here as well, but there's definitely some other uh, amendments here as well. There's perlite and stuff. So I'm just gonna loosen this up, trying not to damage any of the roots here. It's actually quite compact here, which is kind of surprising. Usually moss just starts falling apart, but um, I don't know what this other stuff is, but it's uh, definitely holding it in place a, a bit better. The thing I don't like about moss when removing it from a plant is it's sometimes difficult to know whether it is moss or if it's an actual root that you're tugging on. Probably could have used a bigger container, but that's all I have for my plant stuff right now. See, like right here, is this, uh, this looks like a root actually. I was gonna say, is that a piece of moss? I don't like this other stuff here. It's really dry. It doesn't feel like it's absorbing any moisture at all. These plants were drying out really fast. I was having to water them quite often, and this is probably the reason why. Moss, it tends to hold onto or retain moisture, whereas this stuff, um, it's pretty light and dry. Like it, it feels crunchy even though it's been sitting in water for a little while. Um, so yeah, it's probably the reason why these plants are just drying out so fast. So it's time to put them in something different. Something that'll hold on to moisture for a little bit longer so that they just don't dry out so fast. Typically I will save moss and reuse it, but I'm not gonna save this stuff. This is going right in the trash. That was a lot more work than I was expecting, uh, removing all that moss and I think it's just the uh, coconut husk or cocoa coir, whatever it's called. Um, here is the original pot and here's what I'm going to be upsizing it into uh, a clear orchid pot. Here's the old chunk as well as the large root system uh, where the plant has uh, previously been propagated. So I'm going to be using a mixture of tropical plant mix as well as some orchid bark. So I'm gonna just mix this up. So it's just a nice airy soil mixture. Hopefully this doesn't go into too much shock or it doesn't have any shock. Just filling up the bottom here a little bit. I'm gonna place the stem and all the roots in there. Uh, maybe put a little bit more soil in just like that. Submerging some of those roots. This El Chaco Red is a climbing philodendron as well. I have a Plowmanii, which I'm gonna be taking out of the moss here. That is a crawling philodendron. So I'm gonna to have to position it a little bit different in the pot than a, a climbing aeroid. Eventually I will be giving this one a uh, support stake or something to uh, climb up on. That way I can get uh, larger leaves. Okay, it's potted up. I'm not going to be giving this any fertilizer. Anytime you use a commercial potting mix, they typically add a fertilizer or nutrients into the soil. This is Promix's tropical plant mix and they add fertilizer or nutrients for uh, up to three months. So I'm not gonna be uh, giving any fertilizer to this. Um, so yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Here's my philodendron plow many. I, I love this one for not only the design or the pattern on the leaves, but I love the little ripples on the petiole. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this uh, crawling philodendron. Just gonna take this out of the pot. This one gets really droopy every maybe five days. Um, it's needing a lot of water and you can see it's in the same type of kind of like uh, coconut husk type growing medium with a little bit of sphagnum moss, which I don't like. Yeah, this, I, I don't like this stuff at all. Like it's just, it feels like horse hair. It, I, yeah, it doesn't feel pleasant. It doesn't retain moisture at all. So these have been in this for quite a while. I just, 
I've been too lazy to take them out just because I know how difficult it is to remove sphagnum moss from roots. I absolutely hate it. These aren't bad because the roots are fairly thick, but when you're dealing with Hoyas and they have like really thin roots, most times when you uh, are thinking you're yanking on a, a piece of sphagnum moss, you're actually just tearing apart the root system, which is not good. Now, when you're planting or potting up a crawling philodendron, uh, it's a little bit different than a climbing philodendron or just a regular philodendron. When you have a plant like that Al Chaco Red, I typically plant them in the middle of the pot, whereas this one, just because it crawls along the soil, I'm gonna be placing this portion at the side of the pot so that it has room to crawl and grow in the pot and I don't have to repot it again for, for a while. So that's really the only difference when repotting a climbing versus crawling philodendron. And I do have one more plant, an Ethereum, that is also in moss. Not to this type, it's just in st straight sphagnum moss, so it's probably gonna be a little bit easier than this. This is difficult, this is tough stuff. Today has been kind of a busy day for plant chores and that sort of thing. I uh, cleaned off all my plants on planks and I actually put up another grow light here, which I'll show you guys in a second as well, just to uh, finalize the area. No more grow lights for this area. I've pretty much finished what I wanted to do with my plant workshop area here downstairs. So all my plants down here get uh, artificial light from grow lights. There's no natural sunlight. And uh, yeah, all these plants are just doing so well, except for these ones that have been in this moss. Um, this plumania, like I said, just gets really droopy every few days. So it's time to come out of this mossy mess. I'm gonna be using this terracotta pot for this cutting. And you can see this is the portion that I want up against the edge of the pot. But this little chunk here is uh, preventing me from fully uh, putting it against the edge and that way the plant can grow this way. So I'm actually going to, and I probably wouldn't recommend this, but I'm gonna cut this off just because I need to butt it up a little bit closer to the edge of the pot. But the reason why I wouldn't recommend it is because there's going to be an open wound here. I'm gonna put a little bit of rooting hormone on there just to kind of cover it up um, so that it doesn't get any rot in this area. I know other people say you can put cinnamon and stuff like that on the end just to, uh, to protect it, but I'm just using a little bit of rooting hormone that should be fine. Now you can see I can uh, almost get it completely up against the edge of the pot. All I'm gonna do now is hold the cutting at this level and then I'm just going to add soil in the bottom because I want this portion of the stem resting on top of the soil. So I'm just gonna dump that all in using my pencil to poke down around the roots and just, whoops, don't wanna throw the pencil in there. It's a pretty easy repot process. Like I said, I've never done it before, but nothing too complicated about this one here. So something like that. And then I'm gonna cover up a bit of the stem here at the back. I don't wanna cover it because I don't want it to rot, but something like that. And as it creeps or crawls along, the stem will come this way and the roots from each node or close to those nodes will, uh, I guess, search out into the soil. Now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of water, help settle the soil as well. Just something like that and I'll set it back on the floor underneath my grow lights. I just wanna quickly show you my plants on planks area. I absolutely love how it's coming along. Here is the rest of my plant table workshop area. Don't uh, mind that stool, that's not usually there, but I did have this one Soltec aspect grow light um, just providing light to this area, but I did need a second one, so I got a second one and it's now providing uh, sufficient light for this area. I should also mention that Soltec is having a Black Friday sale. If you enter the code Black Friday, you get 20% off your order. Uh, go check out what they have on their website. I do have the Aspect Grow Light as well as the Highland Track System. Go check it out if you are interested in a Soltec product. It's a pretty sweet deal right now. I'm probably gonna get a couple questions, so I might as well address it right now. Why is my Soltec Grow Light uh, crooked like this? I can't take credit for this uh, little setup here, but I did see it on Instagram. I did uh, kind of uh, tie it up here with a hook at the end and just uh, hooked it underneath the light here. That way I can provide a little bit more of a directional point to the plants that I wanna get uh, higher light. Uh, so yeah, this one, I don't have that set up yet. I think I'm just gonna leave it as is because all these plants uh, are getting the light that they need. So yeah, this is one neat way just to provide a little bit of directional light 
if, uh, if you have like a pendant grow light. The last one is a cross between the Queen Anthurium and the Magnificum. It's got absolutely beautiful leaves, beautiful large leaves. So this one has a fairly large root system and it's in entirely sphagnum moss. So this one shouldn't be too hard. I'm just gonna submerge that. It's pretty dry right now. I'm definitely gonna have to water it when I plot it up in some soil. I don't know what that was. I just pulled off, it looked like an old crusty root. Yeah, this is much easier. Like the moss is literally just falling off. This is much easier than the last one, which I'm happy to, uh, to see because that was pretty difficult. Look at these roots, holy smokes. These are some thick, chunky roots. Oop, and I just broke it. Whoops, it snapped in half. I'll be keeping and reusing this sphagnum moss. I like to top dress all of my anthuriums that are in soil. That way it just holds on to moisture a little bit longer and these guys don't dry out. It also helps me determine knowing when to water an anthurium. If the moss on top is really crispy, then most likely the soil is gonna be dry as well or close to being dry. So then I just give it some water whenever the moss is really crispy on top. There's a few spots like right here. You can see that had root rod at one point. There's a, it did lose a couple of the roots. So I'm gonna snip that back as well. I don't want any rotting portion to remain in the soil. There's a few areas actually. You can see right here, it went from a nice green root to brown or black. So I'm gonna cut that back as well. And this is a perfect example as well. It's green and then it turns to black. So I'm gonna cut that off. I don't know if that's from me overwatering or if the moss is just holding on to too much moisture. These roots, they remind me a lot of big, thick, chunky orchid roots. They're pretty cool. Now I just have to find a pot. Let's see, does it fit back? Okay, that's rot. Does it fit back in the original pot? This is maybe just a little too small. I don't know if I should. I'm gonna see if I can find maybe one pot size larger. Okay, I'm gonna see if there's, I'm gonna see if I have one size larger than this. Okay, I found this one. It looks like it's just slightly larger than the other one. So I'm gonna see if I can, Oh, I need more soil to get all these dead roots out of here. This one will be, this is perfect. You can see the roots fit in there nicely. They're not encircling. I am going to, I'm gonna use up this stuff here first and then I'm gonna to have to add some more soil in there just to finish up the project. I just realized I'm down to my last bag of orchid mix as well. That means I have to go out plant shopping, get some, uh, <laughs> get some soil, get some plants. Now I'm gonna spray these down, clean them up a little bit, and then that should be it for today's project. I've already watered the Plamanii, but now I'm going to give the El Chaco a spray down, as well as a good thorough watering. This little plant shower thing has honestly been a lifesaver. I've used it so many times for my plants on planks, all my other plants uh, just for watering and cleaning off the leaves. Just gonna soak the soil. This will help settle the soil as well. And then I'll put it back in spot and I'll show you guys here in a second where I have it. Okay, so here is the Plamanii. It's all potted up. It's near a humidifier on the floor. Here is the El Chaco Red. It's just underneath my Monstera as well as my Philodendron uh, Silver. So it's just filling in this area here. There's the Plamenii, there's the El Chaco. And then up top here on my plant workshop table is the Anthurium. And I did top dress with that Sphagnum Moss as well. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. If you wanna watch another houseplant video, click this one right here. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Take care, everyone. Bye.